Hey everybody, this is Bailey Wiki, and this is another Design With Me Foundry installment. We're primarily using the Castle and Cave expansion from the November 2022 release. As a reminder, most of this content is in the Towns module in the Actor Compendium. Your folders may have changed by the time you see this, but just type in your search for the asset name that you're looking for, and you should quickly find the folder that they call home. And if you ever want to see everything from this release, just go to the Bailey Wiki Maps Towns scene compendium, past releases, to get to these inventory scenes. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to build a cave scene here. I want to build an ice cave. So I'm going to go into my cave rooms, grab 0001, and I'm going to immediately increase the size of its control token to 1.5. That's going to scale the entire room and all the walls and lights that are attached to it to 1.5. I'm dragging another room here. I'm not going to touch its uh, dimensions and I'm going to have it overlap just a little bit where that little arm overlaps onto the other room because we're going to connect these here in just a second. And then I'm going to drag out a third room. This one I'm going to make probably a different motif but um, and you may have to adjust the size of your scene to make sure everything gets in here just right. I have this one pretty tight. I had this planned ahead of time. And, uh, and then I'm going to move that to tile to the bottom so it, it overlaps in the way that I want it. Okay, so now I'm applying the snow cover filter, and you can see it immediately makes those rooms look snowy. I'm going to right-click with multi-face tiles. I can right-click that water, and I've got other alternatives. In this case, I've got it turned to ice. And then I'm going to use Mass Edit, um, which you just hold down Shift-E when you have everything selected, and you can change all these lights. I'm going to change them all to sort of this light blue color. And I'm going to increase their attenuation so they're not so harsh. And that's feeling pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift C and essentially I'm copying just the light effects that I just implemented. I'm going to copy all of those wherever I took that box. I'm going to hit Shift V and it'll paste those values onto the other light. That way my lights are uniform here. Now I'm in quick edit mode, uh, which is a token attacher function. These are all prefabs, remember, so I wanna change them. And for me to change them while they're still attached to prefabs, I typically wanna turn on quick edit mode. And what I'm doing is I'm just reconnecting and um, uh, deleting the walls as I need to, making sure that where they connect, that they're snapping together. These are prefabs, remember, they were built um, snap to grid, but when you rotate them and stuff, it can change. And so that's really just the process here is just uh, cleaning up the walls where these prefabs connect and making sure that they that these endpoints of the walls connect, that they don't have like a sliver of an area in between them uh, because your players will see the, the light going through that area. And then we always want to do a walkthrough of a scene when we create it. So you see how those two points aren't quite connected? I'm just going to make sure manually that they're that they're reconnecting just by moving them. That'll that'll snap them to the to the grid. All right, so that's feeling pretty good. Now I want a portal. I'm going to go into my inventory and grab the portal archway. There's two of them in here, and I'm going to lay it down. It's already pre-configured as an overhead tile. So uh, at this point, I just want to kind of move it just to the right spot where I feel like it's covering that entrance. And then I'm going to also use the um, snow cover macro to make sure that it gets covered with snow as well. Now I'm going to copy that whole prefab just by selecting the control token and pasting that cave down here below. I'm going to have this cave actually teleport to another cave over here. If I pasted it again, in this case I'm going to remove the snow cover uh, token magic effects filter. I'll move this around and it's feeling pretty good. Again, I've got quick edit mode on so I can make additions, and changes. In this case, I'm going to tag it using the tagger module called cave out. And then its twin, I'm going to tag it with cave in. And now they both have unique names in this scene. Now I'm going to go to triggers and I want any token that enters um, using the border of the image, not, not the tile itself. And I want to have the triggering token essentially teleport to my cave out tile. And since it's we're teleporting in scene, I don't have to mess with the other changes. And then I also want to apply a sound. So I'm going to play a sound. 
I'm going to go into my sounds. This is in the Towns Compendium. And I'm going to type in steps. And I'm going to find all these different step sounds. And I'm going to have it just play for the triggering player so it doesn't get too chaotic. Or restrict it to the scene. And I'll have it stop if it's already playing just so I don't get too many sounds of people walking around. And then I'm going to hit Shift C. Remember that's copy that's using mass edit from Adif. I'm going to select all of these things that I just configured. It's all the intelligence I just configured. And then when I select this new one and hit Shift V, I'll just instantly paste all of those settings to that new one. That's why I love mass edit so much. Then I just have to come in here and change it from out to in as its destination. And really all the other intelligence is already there. The sound file, the steps walking up and down, that kind of thing. Now that I've got some things going on, I want to test with my player. So I'll drag in a player with a vision. And you can see the teleport works great. So I can teleport uh, in and out of that particular area. As a GM, when you're playing the game, you can always disable it. Now there is a token magic effects filter there. I unapplied it by hitting that garbage can. It's in my macros if you're ever looking for it. It's also a token magic effect macro. Now I'm interested in applying an effect to this lava to make it look like it's really kind of smoldering and moving. And I'm playing around with some of the uh, water filters that I have in my nuts and bolts compendium. And I'm just uh, testing them to see what kind of effect they give me, right? This one's a little bit too like water wavy. So I've decided that I like the red filter. So let's make some adjustments to this one because it's too intense right now. Uh, first, I'm going to change its intensity to 0.2. It started as two, now it's 0.2. And I'm gonna cut down this glint a bit. You can see it cuts that down quite a bit. And that feels pretty good. It looks like that tile is alive and kind of moving. And then I'm gonna make, I'm gonna add just a bit more to the effect by changing this ghostly light. I'm gonna add some saturation and contrast here. And I'm gonna increase the, the total range of that light. So this this whole room feels like it's, it's hot and it's a very different ambiance than what my cold rooms provide. And I'll just make a couple more settings until I feel like it's just right. And now I want to play with some plot hooks. So this is the skull uh, plot hook. If I drag it in, you can see I've got just a regular skull. Those horns are colorable. Anything in red is colorable with the dungeon draft thing. But you can see I can right click it and there's a ton of other skulls that I can use. And in this case, I'm going to hold down shift, put it in just the right spot. It's, it's uh, set as an overhead tile at the moment. And I'm going to have this actually be a staircase so that the idea is your players will enter it and it will teleport them somewhere else. Notice I had to change the chance to trigger to 100%. I think it's a bug with token attacher. You want to make sure that that's 100%, not left at 50. And I'm just going to put in some general uh, placeholders for intelligence here, right? I'm going to want to change this tag to something else in some other scene. Because I'm going to teleport to another, another scene, I'm going to select those settings you guys can go back and look at those this is going too fast and then i'm going to use the steps again so that when a player walks in they've sort of signaled that they're they're teleporting somewhere and again you can come in here and add more things later you can have there have to be checks involved before this staircase will work but the idea is i just want to have an egress point where this goes somewhere else now I'm gonna drag in a, a tile set. This is with the cave system. This is the cave stalagmites. Um, this is without the shadows. Open up token attacher, hit the garbage can, and you can essentially delete everything from that control token, right? And so now we just have these uh, tiles that we can move around anywhere that we want. We can cut and paste them. We can enlarge or reduce their size. It's really entirely up to us how we wanna design with all of these. So they're super flexible. I'm holding down shift so I can select everything. And then I'm going to apply that same snow cover filter to all of those. Same thing that I applied to the rest of the cave. You can see how flexible and easy this is to just create stuff on the fly, right? Um, maybe put a, another couple of stalagmites in the other room. C, instead of shift C, shift C will engage mass edit, which is what I was doing there just a second ago by accident. All right, it's feeling pretty good. And I'll come back in here before the release and apply some other things. I might do some terrain walls and things like that around there. Now I'm gonna change my background to black because I think it looks really nice. 
and I'm going to go uh, test the scene now. All right, this is feeling pretty good. I love this kind of hot ambiance here. Decided I want to put a stalagmite in here, so I'm going to just copy that tile and then just delete the filter on it. But now I want to put a lava sound in here, and I'm going to set it to 9 and 0. Just because these walls are set to 0 to 9 using levels module, you may want to set those to infinity when you actually go play your game. Um, in case you allow you, uh, your players to, to fly up in the air, probably a pretty good idea. But for now, just so it's constrained in these walls, I set it 0 to 9. That sound file is also in my Towns Compendium in the Sounds folder, which is the top level folder. There's a ton of sounds in there to play with um, and put in your scenes as you guys see fit. All right, so that's feeling pretty good so far. Let's see, well, now what do we add? Let, let's go back to um, tile sets. This is a cave tile set. This is crystals. I'm going to release them from their um, token attacher bondage. And now I can move these tiles around any way that I want. I can, again, I can resize them. I'm holding down shift to rotate them and place them exactly in the space that I want just so they don't snap to grid. And because these are light colored, I can just use this the stock boundary tinting options, give them a little, a little I don't know what the color is, indigo hue. All right, now well, let's go back into plot hooks and let's grab this uh, floor reveal. This is an ice floor reveal. I'm gonna release all of these tiles from Token Attacher. And this already has some intelligence built into it. And if you right click it, you can change it to something else. So you see, I just change it here to a treasure chest. So maybe I will add later, or you can add, Let's see if a player just clicks on it, it opens, it might be the GM that has to activate it, but always check out the intelligence and test your, your scenes before you, before you actually play it. Now I just copied it and I'm saying, in this case, I want this one to do something different. Anytime a player enters it, I want to trigger some effect to happen. Notice I had to set that back to 100%. Don't forget that. In case you ever see that's a problem. In this case, I'm going to get rid of the existing intelligence. I'm going to leave the sound effect. I want the ice to sound like it's breaking. But then I'm going to use the hurt heal action against the triggering token. I'm going to put negative space and then these two uh, open brackets and two closed brackets. It's important to get the space in there. This is going to basically hurt any player that enters with a 46 roll. I'm going to increase its size just so I can help make sure it gets triggered properly. And then I'm just picking what the image is. So in this case, I'm going to unhide it so I can see the artwork. And I like this like frozen water underneath. I feel like that could be some good cold damage. And then as I have my player walk over it, I um, have the, the attack happen, right? Now, you're going to have to play with this uh, token attacher or excuse me, yeah, Monk's Active Tiles is what powers all of this intelligence. It changes all the time. So, you know, when you get it, I, I recommend you watch some of my tutorials to know what the latest capabilities are, uh, limitations, things like that, if there's any bugs, that sort of thing. But for right now, this is feeling pretty good. I'm going to now create a few of these. I have an idea that maybe this room is going to be a uh, an interesting battle where your players really don't see those tiles until they run across them, and then all of a sudden they find out that they are they're hurt by them. Um, you can, once they cross over a tile, you can deactivate it as the GM. You can also create different types of intelligence um, you know, using Monk's active tile. So I recommend you come in here and play with it and definitely play test it with an incognito session. And now what I'm doing is I'm saying, look, you know what? I want to actually to pause the game. So I'm going to add this pause game action whenever a player runs across it. But I don't want to have to repeat that over and over. So I'm going to hit shift C, which is um, mass edit, and then I'm going to select everything else and hit shift V, that I just want to paste those trigger actions. And you can see they all have now the pause game action on top of everything else that they had before. A really, really cool tool, mass edit, to be able to do stuff like this. And so now all of my traps have, um, have the same uh, feature, right, to pause the game when, when a player walks over them. Now I'm going into the tiles. I don't have this as a prefab. I'm just going into the tiles, into the plot hooks 
tiles. It's in the Towns module. You can stop and, and see where, where they're at. You can also just click into a lot of these to see where these things are, are located as far as the file paths. But in this case, I just want to use this, this floor portal. It doesn't do anything special except that it's colorable. So I'm going to use the Dungeon Draft colorable filter to be able to make it sort of black underneath. I could have made it blue, like there's ice under there, but I just feel like maybe I want an enemy to spawn there or something. Now I'm going to create some um, uh, ambient noises here. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the lava. Set it from nine. Uh, actually, I'll come back in here and set it to zero. And in this case, I'm going to use a, a Gelfi uh, frozen cave ambiance that's in my um, compendium or in my in my module folders and towns. And now I've got this nice cave ambiance. You see, it's not constrained to walls yet until I set it to zero nine, and now it is. So uh, again, you may want to, if you're going to play this map, you, want, you may want to hit Control A, select all of your walls and put them to infinity if you feel like you want your players to be able to fly up in the air. Now I'm just uh, copying and pasting that, that ambient beacon so that that sound of uh, frozen cave sort of permeates the entire place. Now what I'm going to do is turn on some weather. I have a pre-built weather that moves clouds from left to right. I'm going to turn that on and then come in here to FX Master and actually edit it. I'm going to make the clouds larger, make them slower. Hit the Save button, which doesn't give you any indication that it's saved, which I hope gets added later. And now I'm just going to add a drawing. This drawing, because I don't want the clouds to go over this volcanic room. I want this to be masked from all the weather. I'm going to draw a little drawing here. It's just a regular polygon. And I'm going to draw it all around the whole room. And I'm going to right click it and press that little cloud button. And that's going to prevent the clouds from going into that room. And you can see it's already masking them there on the left. Now I'm going to turn my lights down, see how this plays out. And you can see we've got a really nice ambient effect. We're cruising around our. Um, you know, our cave, and this is feeling pretty good, like pretty quickly, a nice custom ice cave that's then got all these other elements in it and some fun things that we can make, you know, more smart or, or less smart. I am gonna hit this delete all control tokens. It's also in nuts and bolts. It's gonna turn everything from prefabs into just regular tiles. Can't undo it, but it's gonna make it so everything is now really movable and I can manipulate it a lot. And, uh, and now we've got, really a, a good starting point for a map. You guys will get this map if you subscribe and you can come in here and make any of these changes yourself now that you know how it works, now how it's set up. And then in another installment, I'm gonna show you how to uh, take this map and completely modify it. And we're gonna make a an orc cave that's entirely different than what you see here, uh, just using all the pieces that we already put into place. So this is feeling pretty good. We're now walking through it. I'm looking at all my walls. Uh, that teleporter doesn't go anywhere, but it does give me the sound effect that I want. And so, yeah, this is a pretty complete map. And you guys stay tuned for the next installment if you want to see, continue to see how to use the system to design.